Welcome to the Curra Plains, home of men and sheep and horses. And this is white colour. It's about the only white colour thing around because I don't see any sheep today. This is the Mazda CX-30. It is the 100th anniversary version of it. It just came out last year. Mazda were 100 years old in 2020. Unfortunately, there was a worldwide pandemic, so we really didn't hear a whole lot about it. But I'll tell you what, let's have a fast look at their first car from 100 years ago. On January 30th, 1920, Jujuro Matsuta started a Toyo Cork Kogo, a business that made cork in Hiroshima, Japan. But just over a decade later, the company produced its first automobile and eventually changed its name to Mazda. The Mazda Go was the actual first automobile that was launched in 1931. It was a very popular car as it could get into small streets and markets. In 1945, the Americans dropped the atomic bomb on the home city of Mazda. The factory was saved from being wiped out by the mountains. The Mazda factory was only five kilometres away from the centre of the explosion. In the 1950s, Mazda launched some trucks, but what actually put Mazda on the world map is the R360 Coupe. Since then, they have tried rotary engines, but generally default back to traditional engines again. We've all seen the legendary MX-5, but let's run through some other cars that Mazda made over the years that made them famous for people who really love cars. Thank you. 
So 100 years later, Mazda now has this CX-30. Still petroleum powered. This one is a mild hybrid, or MHEV as they call it, which, uh, look, MHEVs have their place, I suppose, in a slow transition over towards full BEV, but realistically, MHEV doesn't really do a whole lot for the car. But the outside of this, where we're going to start looking at the Mazda CX-30, particularly this 100th anniversary one, because I, I feel sometime in the future, these anniversary editions of all the cars will be worth a lot more money than their comparable, just standard versions of it. Let's start on the outside. The Mazda CX-30 still feels like a five-door hatchback to drive. They've made massive wheel arches with that black surround on them to make it look like a big SUV, but actually it's based on the Mazda 3 underneath. The 100th anniversary version gets these small inlays into the hubcaps that have 100 years written on them, and also on the side of the car they've got little stickers and logos all around that are there to remind you about the 100 years. Chin strap on the front is slightly different as well, and then when we come around the back of the car it's pretty much the same as a standard CX-30. Still plenty of room in the boot for any amount of luggage that you want to put into it. So when we look around the inside of the car, we're met with a beautifully rich interior. Can I just point out this car is really rich. It feels luxurious. This dashboard layout just feels so well built, Mazda. This is, be, this is where I would expect it to be when I'm talking about Volvo or BMW or Mercedes, that end of the market. But this is the price or the kind of spec that it's going after is more in the Volkswagen range of stuff. But just this dash is so well built, really is. So the seats here are definitely worth a look as well, because this is 100 years, 1920 to 2020 Mazda, and then this beautifully rich red leather interior. These are heated, by the way, and then this white contrast along with the black dashboard. You can have that dashboard in a sort of a two-tone effect as well. Very pretty, very handsome Mazda, very impressed with that. Looking at the dash here, you do get mechanical dials, and then there's a kind of an electronic dial in the middle. I'll start it up and you see what I'm talking about. So it's quite an electronic vibe to that in the middle of it. Very pretty. Uh, I do like it. I do like the physical ones there as well. Up here at the top, this is not a touchscreen. This is, uh, that's obviously reversing cameras around right now, but that's not a touchscreen either. So that's the front camera, actually. This was pointing out there at the front road. There's front and rear and side parking cameras. You can see here, you get a top-down view to go with it. Moving now for now a minute. Physical knobs and dials here for the heating controls. Heated seats, heated steering wheel, heated rear window, heated front window. No, it's not heated front window, it's just, just blower front window. Um, and then a heated passenger seat as well. And they're all physical, good, solid physical knobs and things on the dashboard. It's really cool. And then when you move down here, you got a little tray here. And then you got this uh, cup holder, it's my USB cord. Uh, start stop button is here. Six speed manual, the best manual gearbox on the market still is, has always been, and will always be as far as I'm concerned. Then you have the knob that controls that actual dial is up on top here. So if I go up here, you'll see on top of you press the back button and you're left to this, which allows you into the Mazda system, the normal Mazda system. Now you notice here that I don't have uh, uh, Apple CarPlay hooked up to this at the moment. It is there, Apple CarPlay works perfectly well. Um, but there you go, that's your, that is where I'm parked. Look, I'm in Ireland. Over there on the corner, the very look, the, look at the Atlantic and Spain and Portugal out here to one side. I'm pointing out into the Atlantic, but I'm in the middle of the country, kind of, or to one side of it. Uh, but the Mazda communication system is actually pretty good. I don't have a problem with it. It works very well. Uh, Apple CarPlay works very well as well. But Apple CarPlay is more of a touchscreen environment. So when you're actually using it, you find that you're kind of clunky because it's hard to find all what you're looking for because you have to use this little dial here that allows you to be able to twist back and forward. Now I'm okay with that because it means less time of taking your eyes off the road. And because of the way Mazda has situated their infotainment system, when you're sitting here, it's just there. It's right beside you. Now behind that uh, knob that's here that you can use for controlling your stuff is this very long armrest, which is really, really comfortable, but it slides back to reveal quite a pocket underneath it, quite a big pocket underneath it. Now this is the only USB port that's in the car that I can find. There's a 12 volt socket beside that. I really do wish there was a couple of USB ports up towards the front of the car somewhere, uh, towards the front panel here, because once you're in there, once you have that in, if you don't put your phone in there, where do you put it? Like you're gonna put it here, right? Into this back tray. But then you have to stretch this cable out this way and put it off over there. Just doesn't make, not ergonomic sense, I think a couple of USB, oh there is a USB port. 
Apologies, Mazda. I'm sorry. I'll retract that right now. I did not see that there's a USB port tucked underneath here. No, I didn't see that. We'll keep that in though, because that's, that's just something that happens every once in a while, because from this position, when I'm looking down on it, didn't look like there's any USB ports here until I leaned right over and looked up, and there is actually one. So I'll retract that. USB port in here, USB port up here, job done. Um, steering wheel is, I think, a tiny bit thin. It's okay, it fits the hand though, all right? Uh, and I like the controls around it. Active cruise control is over here. Uh, stereo controls are over here. And then behind that, you've got lights, auto lights, auto wipers, and the rest is all happening as per normal. You do actually get a decent sized glove box, and I mean a decent sized, sized glove box. And you get a little box here, 100 years, 1920 to 2020. And just to point out that that's where your key goes, and your key, when you get your key for your car in this anniversary version, which I can show you now, will also have the same logo on the outside of it. It's actually got it on the key, which is quite nice. I do wish those little tiny buttons that are on the key are fiddly enough, I have to say. But uh, this uh, logo on the back is actually quite nice. Really, really well done. Now, I love this cabin. To drive in this car, this cabin is 100% correct. So let's have a look at the back seat before we take it for a proper spin. Turn it off there by and save the petrol. So look, one criticism I have straight away is the back doors aren't very big. That's okay, I'm all right with that because this is a small family five door hatch. When you get in, there's actually room for you to sit as an adult. When I close the doors, there's a good thud. It's a good thud. Uh, room above me, so if I turn my camera around this way so you can see what I'm doing, Room above me here is actually okay. I'll fit my hand in just about, just about. I don't have to lean over anywhere. I can sit here quite happily. Now I'd have to tilt my head this way if I want to put my head, arm on the armrest. But it is a small five door hatchback, so let's not get excited about stuff. Um, here, there are only two air vents. There's no USB ports that I can detect anywhere. There's nothing down here. When I come around this way, I have an armrest, a couple of cup holders in it, no doubt about that. No loader through, but that's okay. I can live without that. I had to get out of the car to see how the seats came down. There's a button on the top of them that you push down, which is actually quite awkward. That's a weird button. Anyway, the seats do go down. It's a little bit awkward to work that little button on the shoulder up there. You have to push it down and then sort of pull it. But there's no handle, it doesn't lift. Hmm. Anyway, back seat is okay. I'm okay with the back seat. Let's move on for a spin. Just on a word before we leave on seat and position, this doesn't feel like a small SUV when you sit in it. Most small SUVs elevate you from the ground, but because this is built on a Mazda 3 platform, it feels like a five-door hatchback. In actual fact, it feels a tiny bit like a Mazda MX-5, just the way it's reclined, the seat is kind of sitting backwards, my feet are pushed forward onto the pedals. So there's, a, there's an odd sort of seat position in this car, which is not what I expected it to be. But shall we drive on? <coughs> on the dirt tracks here. So this is powered by a two liter gasoline engine. Now, Mazda have been the king of the gasoline engines for a very long time. All of the petrol engines I've ever driven belong to Mazda have always been super. Their diesel's a little bit lackluster. Uh, you know, the 2.2 liter diesel they used to have, really, it's okay, but I, it's not brilliant. Whereas the gasoline stuff, the petrol powered, the explosion powered things are very good and of course they have their mx30 which is forthcoming here in ireland which will give them an electric car to go with it now you might feel that petrol power is not the thing to have but this is coupled to a six-speed box which is the best gearbox that anyone makes. I would, I would argue with anybody to say who has the best gearbox on the market right now, and I'd say it's Mazda. Particularly coupled to this two liter engine, it does make the car feel quite tight. It feels like something that wants to be driven, even though it's a small SUV, in that small SUV stance of things. Quality indicator take out of it. There is a real feeling of quality in this CX-30. I think it feels like a car that's designed to be quality. Whoa, the fog is lifting and the sun is starting to come out. It was a sunny day yesterday. It was very, very warm in Ireland yesterday. Uh, and we're at it again today. Even letting that rev roll out there works fine. You know, it really does really good little engine and gearbox combination. 
Now this does and is based on a Mazda 3, but it does feel like Mazda 3 as well to drive. You do feel like you're sitting in the cabin of an executive version of Mazda 3. So you get that big butch exterior, but the interior feels like a five door hatchback. Nothing wrong with that, I have to say, I quite like it. That not being a touchscreen doesn't bother me at all. I think uh, the lack of a touchscreen is actually probably benefiting it because they can recess the screen further back from me and I'm not looking at it the whole time. You know, if you want to do communication, just touch the wheel down here and you're into communication. I haven't hooked up a phone to it, but it's there. Physical buttons are winners. I, I think touchscreens are becoming dangerous at this stage. There's a point now where they're becoming a huge distraction on everybody. The anniversary edition has a heads up display out in front of me. I can't really show you that. I'll do my best to film it, but it really is only available to the driver as you're driving along. No one else can see it. Every once in a while in certain lights, like right now, I can see the projector recess point is actually, st is actually reflected into the windscreen. There's a really narrow bridge. Been here for generations because the car was made by men. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it makes me laugh. It feels unusual to actually be sitting in, I know it's a mild hybrid, but to be sitting in a petrol powered car that hasn't got a big fat turbo or a big diesel sound to go with it, and this kind of predictable end of power that makes some kind of sense in your brain as a driver, as an experienced years and years and years of driving just standard petrols. To go back into that petrol vibe again is actually quite nice. It's quite reminiscent of old times, which is why, of course, 100 years of Mazda is on this, because Mazda have been creating those kind of cars for 100 years. Now, it's no rotary engine, I get it. Mazda has rotary engines as well. I think they've all but given up on making the, the Wankel engine actually work, or rotary engine actually work, as it's not very reliable, it's very thirsty. An actual uh, rotary engine out of the, say, RX-8 is a 3.9 litre. I know they're insured or tax or something is a 1.3, but that's, that's per cylinder. Anyway, they're 3.9s. Uh, this isn't, this is a 2 litre petrol, 4 cylinder runs very well and is so quiet and smooth and compliant. A little bit of tire roar out there, but I'd expect that. I, I still haven't driven an SUV that hasn't got tire roar. Uh, very hard to see out the front and behind a Dacia Sandero, and that's all I can see really. After that's fog. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's lifting, it's burning off, but it's still there, so it'll be fine. What I like what Mazda is doing right now is they're sticking to their guns. Unlike a lot of other car companies out there who are flip-flopping between what they're going to do and what they're not going to do, Mazda has said they're doing this, we're going to go this way, mm. we're going to have the CX-5, which is just overtaken a second ago, which is a review on my channel as well, and the CX-30, and we're going to have the Mazda 3. Uh, in case you're wondering, there is a CX-2 and there is a CX-5. This is not the CX-4 because Mazda already owned the CX-4 and it's not this. That, by the way, was warning me that that Citroen was going around the roundabout beside me. It's a side warnings as well. Mad, the amount of safety stuff that's on the car. This is that. It's not glorious, like, oh. <laughs> glorious noise. The sound of fossil fuels being burned is wonderful. Every once in a while, I need to be reminded that these things do actually happen. It's awesome, awesome noise on the car. Uh, just a two liter power, like very predictable, very, the power ramp through is just gorgeous. Just have such a lovely car, really, really good, Matthew very happy with this listen thanks very much for watching hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already more exciting reviews to come this year uh we are going we're back to work more or less which is really good um i'm delighted to have you along with us for the journey if you could come along with that it'd be great uh listen also you can find me on various social media including instagram twitter uh tiktok there's quite a big following there if you want to drop into that one and, uh, and of course here on YouTube where's my home. If you can support the channel in some way, there's a list of links down below, Patreon, PayPal, and all the usual sort of ways you can. It'd be great if you could. Or you can join in every Sunday for a live chat for two whole hours on the Sunday service, which goes every single week while we're locked down. So I've been on Sunday service uh, six months straight tr stretch, and now again for another two months straight stretch. So it's been a really exciting few months. Uh, things are really starting to look up, and uh, things are starting to get much better for everyone, I think, out there now. 
we're coming back to normal so i'd love to have you along uh, thank you very very much for watching this and until the next time i will see you on the far side now that the layabouts are gone <laughs> the ones who don't watch to the end we're here this is the end we made it this is the behind the scenes bit i'm actually on the end seven uh, heading up to this kind of three lane section the sky has become blue out now just completely blue out the front there isn't a single cloud in it and it's beautiful could you get any closer there caddy that caddy got close enough to me pulling back in that the car has my car has slowed down using the active cruise control thanks caddy for doing that it's always good most people think this three lane section is still a hundred kilometer an hour zone you hit it and suddenly you find everyone's doing a hundred kilometers an hour and it frightens the shit out of you There's that silent patch. This is such a lovely car to drive, it really is. Feels like such a little five door hatch. It actually feels a bit sporty for a five door hatch. That's so good. The active cruise control is actually pretty good as well. Uh, one thing is the lane keeping is not brilliant. Um, it doesn't really do anything about you mo moving out of lane until you're almost like out of it. There's no nudge to back in or anything. Not like that. Why is the N7, this bit of it here, so bumpy? Tell me no. It's really bumpy along there. Maybe Des from Gogglebox knows. I know Des from Gogglebox. It does be uh, on me live streams at night time on TikTok. Into lane one, which is bone dry, perfectly blue sky. Beautiful day out, isn't it? It really is very nice. I love these spring sort of semi-summer spring days. Get outside, get some vitamin D. It's very good for you. <clears throat> really will make you feel better at all times. And you're coming up on the channel, I may not have mentioned at this point, but the merch that I have here, the stuff I'm wearing today, these are all on test. I'm trying out some new stuff. Um, I love my logo. Thanks, Jack and Stephen. Um, they've been, they've been brilliant to me. They designed my logo of two young guys from Newbridge. Uh, designed my logo, very nice chaps. Um, that's going on to everything now. The merch shop probably will be open by the time you see this. I hope it's going to be open. There's some pictures and things to take. It's actually really exciting. I'm very nervous because I'm totally in control of this, what the merch looks like and its quality and the, every, you know everything it's, taking, it's, quite a, it's quite a big step it's not like I'm making a clothing line I'm just putting some logos on clothes but I still like trying fabrics and trying out stuff and it's actually you know in your brain you kind of go should I will people actually buy this stuff there is a nervousness to me because I'm going to have to stock this so there is a nervousness around that idea of people having to buy or wanting to buy things or will they ever want to buy the thing you know I'm looking forward to launching the shop and have it running properly. Uh, we're stocking the goods at home, so we're actually going to take in stock of the stuff and, um, and send them out whenever we can, if possible. We have a lot to learn. Never owned a shop before, so a lot to learn. I'm going to try and find stuff to put on the shop that would be useful for you guys. Not just stuff that makes money, just stuff that's kind of useful as well, you know? Because I, I chose this top because it's very hard wearing. And will wash very well. And that's embroidered into it. So is the snood. These are fleeced as well, so they're quite warm. And we have a runner's version coming out as well, a, a face covering, a mask face covering, which would be a little bit lighter uh, and would be better for possibly running. I don't recommend any of these masks, to be honest with you, to be used as a mask you would use to go into a shop with, because they're not that kind of mask. They're, they're snoods for keeping them warm. Anyway, I can't wait to actually launch the shop out and get it started. Uh, I just need to get it off your back now. I need some more photography, and that's pretty much it. Away we go, then. Anyway, right, I'm going to crack on up to Dublin. Thanks very much for joining into the last part. You are the generals. You are the people who watch to the end of these things. Uh, lots of activity coming up in the near future, so stay tuned. Make sure you keep attached to the channel or attached to some form of outlet that I do, because obviously I announce things on all the outlets. Uh, EV Ready is going to be good to us over the next little while as well. We're looking forward to getting into going with Des. Um, 
I see her motion ends up there as well, which would be pretty good. Anyway, right, I'm going to let you go now. Safe home now. Don't let the door hit you in the arse on the way out. Uh, goodbye now. Goodbye now. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye.